the nickel nickel nine. Yeah. Uh, five nine J. Uh, uh, let me speak my mind up. Uh, uh, this is me keeping it real. Uh huh. Keeping it one hundred. Let's go. Yeah. Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day. Feeling a blessing, like I always say. It's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. That being said, man, I got these pictures a long time ago. Been a little busy. You know, I haven't even shaved, man. I've been moving like crazy. Been working like crazy. But I'm about to show you guys these pictures. But like I said, hit me up on 59 underscore J-A-Y-Y on Instagram. And, you know, like I said, I'll pass them to you guys. You guys want to see them, have them look at them, because I know you guys are very fans of all this violent stuff, all right? But let's get into the video. I want to talk about it. Now, a long time ago, I did a video. Uh, the whites, the skinheads, they jumped one of their own, three on one, and he died. He lost his life during this battle. But in that process, I did mention in the video that he retaliated. He had a banger on himself, too, and he pulled it on on one of the suspects. Well, I have pictures of the suspects on a gurney bleeding like crazy as you can see across the screen of course i gotta blur it out for you guys my apologies in advance but youtube be on some censor stuff super super censor stuff man i'll be like damn bro i just you know how much more money you guys would make if you guys stop censoring everything but you know they don't listen to me they just make money off me that's crazy bro they just take half my money that's half I mean, at least be the government and tax me for, you know, a percentage, but half, they take half your money, bro. That's why you see a lot of dudes over here really chasing a bag, dropping like 10 videos a day. But anyways, sorry for my, uh, my rant. He got stabbed in the back. Cool part about it is I have the pictures of the victim and they use the metal flat. They cut the locker, sharpen up the locker, bro. It's about as big as a Michael Myers kitchen knife. And you can see that Raptor handle with rope. Dude, they took pictures of this dude while he's dead on a gurney, and they moved his back. Dude, the knife is shoved in his spine all the way through his back, and you can see the blood on the handle where all the string is wrapped around, and I'm looking at the picture like, oh my god, that looks vicious, bro. That, that For one, that thing, like I said, it's a butcher knife. They put holes in this dude all through his back, through his spine. And left the knife there. They couldn't even extract the knife. They just stuck it in him as they... Because what happened was they tackled him, got on top of him. He was face down. And they held him down because he booked one of the suspects. So, you know, obviously it was a threatening gesture. And they're like, Charlie, bro, we got to we gotta defuse this situation. We got to take him down. So they pulled the cowardly act instead of letting him fight back and let him fight for his life and fight for his career. They pressed him down on the ground and just stabbed him in the back multiple times to the point the knife couldn't come out no more. And they left the knife in his back. Now, mind you, one of my subscribers hates when I say, you know, you know, people stab you in the back, your homie stab you in the back. It sounds like a cliche thing to say nowadays with all this prison content that's going on and everything I'm talking about. But they literally stabbed him in the back in this case. So don't get mad that I said that. It's in his back. And if you want to see the pictures, hit me up on Instagram. I'll show you guys. Look, everybody that's watching my YouTube channel, whether you've been your former gang members active gang members even though they will never admit that they watch my channel people that are just intrigued with this prison content and my and my and my my catalog that i'm producing for everybody you might not be even gang members everybody by a show of hands imaginary i'm pretty sure you can raise your hands and say hey man i've been betrayed multiple times on multiple occasions by multiple different people you've been betrayed by family members You've been betrayed by friends. You've been betrayed by girlfriends and husbands, side chicks, whoever is involved in your life. You know, betrayal, there is no loyalty without betrayal. Betrayal is always going to exist, especially in the gang culture. Now, if you're an active gang member, as much as you promote loyalty and honesty, because loyalty and trust are one and the same. If you're actually a participant in this gang life, you betrayed somebody in your life. Betrayed a gang member in your hood. Betrayed a fellow homeboy who you considered to be solid, loyal to, and you betrayed them. You may deny it. I betrayed so many of my homies. I'm looked at as a deserter and a betrayer of my organization because, for one, I got betrayed. I got stabbed in the back. And then I decided to join a different gang in retaliation and resistance. Makes me one of the most ultimate betrayers, one of, a deserter of my organization. That's why I'm one of the most hated 
people on YouTube right now, not by haters, not by trolls, but by the streets in itself. I talk about my experiences. I talk about prison. I talk about, you know, everything that goes on within the penal system because experience is the highest form of truth. My experience and the way I've elaborated on it has told you guys the art of betrayal. I've tried to show you my loyalty to the gang and look where I ended up. Yeah, a lot of people could say I shot myself in the foot. A lot of people could say I did it to myself. Betrayal is betrayal. See, the thing is, everything that I was doing against the grain and against the rules, breaking policies and not conforming to certain big homies and what they wanted was a betrayal to them. But to me, I was being loyal to Northerners. I was being loyal to Northerners. I was being loyal to a different brotherhood. See, no matter what you do in this crime, see, no matter what you do in this organization or in this gang life, you're going to believe at some point what you're doing is for the loyalty of others for the righteousness of others. But even if you are bending the rules or breaking some rules or not acknowledging certain people or disregarding certain people or taking matters into your own hands for a personal gang or you have personal vendettas, at some point, you're always gonna justify your actions and your allegiance to certain people or certain neighborhoods as a form of loyalty. But there's gonna be a lot of people, a mass amount of people in this life that are gonna look at everything that you do and scrutinize it and they're going to find the forms of betrayal and they're going to betray you for that. In this case right here, it doesn't matter what he did. The thing about it is every person that I've talked about and every person story that I've shared with you guys, you guys look at it like, oh, it's just people with, you know, personal vendettas or, you know, resentment. Where does that all come from? People that have locked it up, people that have been removed. I share their stories with you guys because, like I said, experience is the highest form of truth. Now, mind you, a lot of my content does come from a lot of active people who are just pissed off and mad at the way things are going and decided to expose their organizations for what they really are in today's generation. They're fed up with it. So don't think for one second all my information comes from SNY because look at all the updated information that I provide. That comes from active gang members that are just not happy with the way things are going. And maybe this is my... Maybe this is their way by providing me with information that can maybe change a lot of things because I've seen some changes. I've heard about some changes. So I make somewhat of a difference even when it comes to prison organizations and the way they move and the way they treat their own people. So this man was loyal to the white faction, that whole sense of white pride, white power, whatever his skinhead belief systems were. Remember, when you're a gang member, you're conforming to a lot of ideology. You're conforming to a lot of ideologies and belief systems that were created by men before their time, men that are in the positions of power that are in existence on these main lines. You're conforming to a program. And in order to conform to a program, you have to be loyal to it. There's very few people that, you know, go to prison and just abide by the rules and regulations because they're like, damn, bro, like, it got serious, bro. On the streets, it was one thing, but now it's serious, bro. I can mess up and die and get my throat slit open and get stabbed up to death. I'm going to conform. They don't really care about it. They don't agree with it. They'd rather not if they could, but they're going to conform to it. But a lot of people that are continuously becoming active gang members on the streets then ended up in the penal system and whatever organization they decide to join with, remember, you have to be loyal to those belief systems and those ideologies, not just conform to them. If you're a righteous gang member, if you're a true believer, you're going to adopt this belief system and be loyal to it. And with loyalty comes trust, because that's what happens when betrayal does come into place is because it began with trust. You trusted an organization and you trusted a bunch of gang members that have been scattered out throughout the California penal system. You trust them with your life. Every ounce of loyalty that you're willing to provide for this organization, they're going to do the same thing. Not everybody has good intentions. Remember, you're extending your hand. Your hand is a sign of loyalty. And shaking hands with other gang members, not ever recognizing which ones have righteous intentions and which ones have malicious intentions. Because a lot of these dudes that become politicians and active gang members that want to become members in these prison organizations, you got to remember that they're going to have to betray a lot of people in order to reach those heights of membership. Those heights of membership that everybody's striving and becoming ambitious to obtain because they want power and they want to be the big homie and they want to be talked about throughout years in the penal system. Bro, you don't make it up there being 
a solid loyalist. You don't make it to those positions by not having your hands covered in blood. Somebody's blood is on their hands. So that same hand that you extend to these prison organizations, they're going to extend it back by shaking your hand, by acknowledging you. Just know that one of those hands becomes a fist and one of those fists is going to knock you down and beat you down. Or one of those fists is going to be holding a weapon and stabbing you in the back because that's what happened with this guy. He was loyal to the white program. He was loyal to the white race. He was loyal to the white power. He was loyal to the white organization. So he believed in it because the man had did removals in the penal system on behalf of the same organization that later on booked him in front of the cops, held him down and shoved a knife in his back and left it there. And when I tell you it's a butcher knife, believe me when I say it was a butcher knife. And that's the thing about loyalty. How many people join this gang culture, these neighborhoods, and always shake hands with the same dudes that throwing up the same body as you? And you're like, damn, fool, like, straight up, bro. That's my brother right there. That's my homie. The same thing about these memberships and these prison organizations, whether they're SNY, whether they're mainline. You ever heard that phrase, man, I'll take a bullet for you? I'll catch a bullet for you? It's a dumb terminology, a cliche terminology that gets thrown in the air. Yeah, I'll take a bullet for that homie. That's how much I love that homie. That's how much I'm down for that homie. In the prison system, we can replace the term bullet with a knife. You know, I'll take a bullet for him. I'll take a knife for him. You know, I'm going to defend my brothers. I'm going to defend their honor. I'm going to defend my loyalties that belong to the same gang as me. Well, just remember, the same people that you'll take a bullet for are the same people that are willing to pull the trigger on you, too. The same people that you're willing to shake hands with are willing to stab you in the back, too. You never know what everybody's intentions are because we're all criminals. We're all, we all went to prison with grimy intentions, robbing people, burglarizing, carjackings. We're all criminals. Don't forget that the friends that you're shaking hands with on them yards, they're criminals. They're in there for an illegitimate reason, crime, coming up on somebody, taking somebody's life. If they're in there for attempted murder, they kill an enemy. Trust me when I say they won't hesitate to kill a friend either. And that's the thing. Becoming a loyal gang member to a prison organization or to a neighborhood, get you you better become accustomed to getting used and taken advantage of and being manipulated. Because what you do by providing loyalty to a gang, to a gang culture, to a neighborhood, to a big homie, you're empowering them whether you like it or not. Because the moment you extend your hand, which is your loyalty, your honor, your honesty, your commitment to their gang cultures and their gang ideologies and worshiping the grounds that they walk on they thrive off that commitment if you really think about it if these big homies didn't have entourages if these big homies didn't have neighborhoods taking care of them would they be rich or would they be broke if these big homies didn't have a handful of soldiers that were willing to stand for them these dudes are 50 60 70 years old some of them go to visiting rooms with uh canes and walkers you think they would be doing all this work that they used to put in in 1968 and 1972? You think they'll go out to the yard and stab the same Sureños or the same Norteños that they're deeming no good? Do you think they have it in them? Nah. They've been empowered by loyalty and sacrifice and the bloodshed that everybody else is providing for them. So you're powerless while they've been empowered by your loyalty. And your loyalty and trust that you provide to this gang life, you don't realize how insignificant you really are. That you really are. Yeah, you stabbed a couple people in prison. So what? Everybody has. Even people that never gangbanged. Residents that, you know, how to pay taxes. They would raise their hand to stab people. People have shot and stabbed people left and right. Doesn't make you any different. Doesn't make you any better because you put somebody down on the yard. People get praised and glorified it a little bit too much in the penal system and your head gets big. But it can easily be get deflated as well. You think because... You are part of an organization and you follow rules and you abide by them and you carry out orders that you're regarded in a high regard. You're still disregarded in so many ways that you fail to acknowledge or you fail to open your eyes to. Because at the end of the day, you're not in control of your life. You're not in control of your career. You're not in control of your gang. You're not in control of who you really are. Because any moment like this man going to school got stabbed by his own homies and didn't see it coming. The same thing that happened to him is the same thing that happened to you. Because betrayal always comes from the people that you trust the most, never an enemy. If an enemy stabs you, you knew you had it coming. You seen it coming, or if you didn't see it coming, bro, that's your enemy. That's what he's supposed to do, and that's what you would have did to him. So betrayal doesn't hurt as bad. It's always going to come from the people that you surround yourself with, your little inner circle that's going to betray you the most. But sometimes the betrayal, if you can live from it and you don't die from it, 
you can manage the damage that is done and the pain that you endure by it, by you know, just understanding the concepts that I'm providing, understanding the concepts and perspectives that everybody else is providing. But I'm gonna end the video on this note. All these dumb cliches that everybody talks about and that I also mentioned, you know, kings and pawns, you know, soldiers to masters, big homies to little homies. It's all the same thing, bro. You're gonna be utilized. You're gonna be taken advantage of. You can show your worth to anybody in this world, whether it's a gang culture, whether it's society, whether it's coworkers, whether it's supervisors, whether it's loved ones and families. Trust me when I tell you, with loyalty comes betrayal. One is not without the other. You can prove your worth to anybody, but unless they know your worth, they're not gonna care about it. You can know your worth and display your worth to any man, but in this gang culture, that worth is only what's worth it to them, not what's worth it to you. So make sure your presence is a privilege and not taken advantage of for other people. Your presence is a privilege because of who you are and the value that you have for yourself as a person. Don't let other people take advantage of it. Trust me, I'm talking from experience. People have taken advantage of me. I've taken advantage of other people. People have did me wrong. I've did them wrong. We live in that kind of society and generational issue that, you know, nobody wants to be loyal to anybody no more. So stop being loyal to people that are only doing it for their own personal benefit and not yours. So with that being said, like I always say, is one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.